Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Nice to see you back. And as I announced the last time, I was very excited. And yet again, I am very excited today because today also we are going to discuss one of the most, 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 most important verses. The last verse we had discussed. Dehi no sminyatha dehe paumalam yovanam jara and now we are going to discuss the 14th shloka from the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. We are still in the second chapter. My God, how many days, years and months. <laughs> and yes, we are going to start. And this verse is very important because this verse will tell us how and why to tolerate things in this world? Many times people have this question, how do I tolerate something? How do I tolerate somebody? So Krishna is going to answer that question now. And he's going to talk about tolerance. All right. And there's a lot of talk about uh, penance, tapasya and these kind of uh, austerities to develop more tolerance. So don't miss this verse. See this video till the end. It is one of the most famous verses of the Bhagavad Gita. This is this verse is one of the foundational principles of the Gita. Right? So there you go. We are going to start now. And you, as usual, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe to it down below. And if you want a consultation from me, you can go to my website also down below. And God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. Please watch the other videos in this playlist if you are new to this video. Otherwise, you may be clueless of what is going on here. All right. Let us offer prayers to our preceptors. Om Agyan Timiran Sya Gyanan Jana Shala Kaya Chakshur Unmili Tamyena Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha. There you go. Second chapter, 14th verse. Matras parsas to conteya, shitos na sukha dukhada, agama pai no nityas, tamstitiksha swabharataha. Matras parsas to conteya, shitos na sukha dukhada, agama pai no nityas, tamstitiksha swabharataha. Matras parsas to conteya, shitos na sukha dukhada. Agama pai no nityas tamsti tiksha swabharataha. All right, let us go to the beautiful translation. Oh, son of Kunti, who is speaking? Lord Krishna is speaking. Who is son of Kunti? Yes, it's Arjuna. Oh, son of Kunti, the non permanent appearance of happiness and distress, the non permanent appearance of happiness and distress. Very careful with the words. O son of Kunti, the non-permanent appearance of happiness and distress and their disappearance in due course are like the appearance and disappearance of winter and summer seasons. Let's read it again. O son of Kunti, the non-permanent appearance of happiness and distress. That means happiness and distress both are temporary. Today you are happy, tomorrow you are sad. And their disappearance in due course. So happiness comes temporarily and disappears temporarily and misery also comes. That means distress appears temporarily and also disappears temporarily. In due course are like the appearance and disappearance of winter and summer season. So we know winter comes, then summer comes, then again winter, then summer, you know, it keeps coming like this. They arise from sense per perception, O Sion of Bharata. And one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed. They arise from sense perception, O Siyan of Bharata, and one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed. So, what should we do regarding the appearance of happiness and distress in our lives? We must tolerate them without being disturbed. All right, so let us go to the purport. It's a very beautiful purport. 
purport in the proper discharge of duty one has to learn to tolerate non permanent appearances and disappearances of happiness and distress point to be noted in the proper discharge of duty one has to learn to tolerate both the non permanent appearances and disappearance of happiness and distress so that means when we are doing our duties then sometimes happiness will come sometimes suffering will come but we should learn to tolerate them without uh, stopping uh, our duties right so we should not uh, many times people say uh, i am in so much trouble how can i do this All right so we should come to a state or we should aspire to come to a state where even if things are not great in our life we are still able to do the things that we are supposed to do All right it should not hinder our duties that is very important because both happiness and distress the appearance and disappearance of happiness and distress is temporary according to vedic injunction one has to take his bath early in the morning even during the month of magh january february wow it is very cold at that time but in spite of that a man who abides by the religious principles does not hesitate to take his bath similarly a woman does not hesitate to cook in the kitchen in the months of may and june the hottest part of the summer season one has to execute his duty in spite of climatic inconveniences similarly to fight is the religious principle of chatriyas and although one has to fight with some friend or relative one should not deviate from his prescribed duty one has to follow the prescribed rules and regulations of religious principles in order to rise up to the platform of knowledge because by knowledge and devotion only can one liberate himself from the clutches of maya illusion the two different names of address given to arjuna are also significant to address him as kontea signifies his great blood relations from his mother's side son of kunti that means and to address him as bharata signifies his greatness from his father's side he is a descendant of maharaj bharat from both sides he is supposed to have a great heritage a great heritage brings great responsibility in the matter of proper discharge of duties therefore he cannot avoid fighting so basically the indication is to arjuna here that you don't want to fight because bhishma is there on that side dona is there on that side you are, you have a lot of affection for these two personalities but that affection should not hinder you from doing your duty which is to fight because although they are great personalities bhishma is one of the 12 mahajans and dona also he is uh, he is not officially a mahajan but he is a very 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 great personality he is the uh, son of the great rishi bharadwaj and also he is also the disciple of parshuram parshuram is an avatar of vishnu only so these these are not ordinary personalities but somehow they are fighting on the side of the kurus so therefore because they are on the side of adharma they they have to be wiped off wiped off from the uh, place of the face of earth so arjuna cannot compromise on that so he must fight because that is his duty as a kshatriya because a king is supposed to punish those people who are not following the injunctions of the scriptures or the state and arjuna of course he is not the king yudhishthir maharaj is the king but he is also a member of the royal family and a very prominent member so it is his responsibility also to ensure that justice is served because these kauravas 
the uh, Koravas and Shakuni and all that, you know, Duryodhan and company, <laughs> headed by Duryodhan, Dushasan, Shakuni, and Karna, and you know, all these personalities. These people, they there is no sin which they have not committed towards the Pandavas. There is there is nothing wrong which they have not done. I mean, forget sin and religion. Just think from a uh, moral, common sense perspective. You know. They have tried to poison Bhima when he was young. You know. And they tried to burn the Pandavas, including Mother Kunti, when they were in Varnavrat. And they had tried to disrobe Draupadi in the Asat Sabha. Right? So these activities qualify them to not live in this world. And that's what Krishna is telling to Arjuna once again, again and again he's telling that. You are feeling compassionate. That is fine. But those people who you are showing compassion are not worthy of your compassion. If you don't kill these crooks, they will ruin the entire universe. And that Krishna cannot allow. Because that is why Krishna comes as he takes avatars. That's what Krishna says in the Gita. Yada yada hi dharmasya. Glanir Bhavati Bharata Abhyutthanava Dharmasya Tadatmanam Sijam Miham. Yes, I incarnate to annihilate the demons no? and to protect my devotees no? and to re establish Dharma. So Arjuna's predicament was that he, he was very much affectionate towards Dona and Bhishma, which is very which is very obvious because he's a great soul. Compassion is one of the symptoms of a great soul because a great soul, a Mahatma, is always compassionate. One of, in fact, the first symptom of a great soul is he is always forgiving. In fact, it is said a great soul forgives even before he is offended. So suppose somebody goes and offends him and he knows that he is coming to offend me. So even before getting offended, he says, okay, I forgive you. And then he of, he gets uh, he gets the offense later on. I mean, he doesn't feel offended, but before even somebody insults him, he forgives. That's the symptom of a great soul. And on the other hand, if we keep holding grudges, if we uh, keep cultivating uh, negativity, envy, jealousy, hatred, then to that degree, to the degree we are cultivating uh, vengeance or you know. Uh, hatred, envy towards others, towards any living entity in this world, any living being. It can be towards men, women, mother, father, animal, husband, wife, brother, children, anybody. We, to that extent, we are away from forgiveness. To that degree, we are away from being a great soul. To that degree, we are fallen. Because why does a great soul does not take offense? Why does a great soul, why is he always eager to forgive others? Because he feels that uh, he, he is very low and he is very degraded. Because he knows how great God is. So therefore, if you read the prayers of all the great souls, especially Anumanji, then Prahlad Maharaj, then Dhruva Maharaj, all the great souls, all the great personalities in uh, Mahabharat in Srimad Bhagavatam in Ramayana, you will always see that their conception is you know, that, oh, uh, I, I am nobody, I am a sinful, rascal, wretched uh, person, you know, and I deserve the worst. But somehow, by God's grace, I have got this much suffering. And they are always humble and they are always inquiring from others, especially one personality like uh, his Yudhishthi Maharaj. Yudhishthi Maharaj always. If you read the description of the Ekadashis which we follow in the Vedic tradition, you will always, always, always see that Yudhishthi Maharaj is asking question to somebody, to Lord Krishna and Krishna is answering. Now, do you think that Yudhishthi Maharaj does not know what is, you know, this Ekadashi, that Ekadashi? Do you think he doesn't know? He knows it. He knows it perfectly. 100%. Much more than what I can tell or what anybody can see or what we can understand. But why is he still asking? Because he feels that he doesn't know it. Yes, that's why even though he knows perfectly, he's still asking. 
Now the statements begin like this, O Janardana, O Lord of the Universe, please kindly enlighten us about what, you know, uh, this, what is Mohini Ekadashi, what is this Ekadashi, that Ekadashi, you know. On the month of Falgun, the full moon, new moon, this happens, that happens. Please enlighten us. What is this? He goes and asks to Narad Muni, he asks to Vyasdev. Now, if he doesn't know any of this, then how, how in the universe? How the hell is he Dharamraj? Well, that is why he's Dharamraj, even though he knows. But he still wants to know more and more. Yes. So that's what Yudhishthi Maharaj signifies. And he perfectly exemplifies this quality of tolerance. In fact, there was a time when uh, the Parvas had given, you know, uh, this 12 years Banvas and one year incognito, you know, 13 years of exile in total to the Pandavas. Then one day what happened, uh, Bhim and Arjun went to Yudhishthi Maharaj after 13 days of the exile, not 13 years, 13 days. And they went and said that uh, in some places in some versions of the scriptures it is mentioned that in special cases in special conditions we can consider 13 days to be like 13 years so henceforth we can go and attack the Kauravas now this is what Bhima and Arjun said which was uh, technically still correct but then Yudhishthi Maharaj heard it and Yudhishthi Maharaj said that I know what he was saying is correct Technically, we can do that, but I will never use or misuse some quotes in the scriptures and to you know turn and twist it for my own personal benefit. I will never do that. Even if that meant that I stay here for 12 years in incognito, uh, sorry, in, in Vanvas and then one year I spent in incognito, I will do that, but I will not do this. Even if this is correct according to the scriptures, because if I start molding, twisting and modifying the scriptures, like not modifying, but you know, trying to uh, give a selfish uh, interpretation. And that's what many people do these days. He said, if I start doing this as a king, then Adharma will flourish. Everything will be ruined. People will, people will become irreligious. There will be atheism all over and everything will be wiped out. There will be no happiness. That's what you can see in Kali Yuga, what is happening. All the leaders of this world, there is not one single leader of any country. I don't care which country it is or which state it is. You take any country, I'm giving you a challenge. You find any one leader who says that my aim is to make the people of this country more spiritual, irrespective of the religion. There is no, no leader alive in this world, unfortunately. And that is why you see what is happening. Crimes are increasing every day. Every moment somebody is getting killed, somebody is getting robbed, somebody is getting abused. If you see the statistics, you will know. Because the leaders of this of the society today, they are not interested in spiritual pursuits. And that is why this is happening. So because of... Uh, and actually not that the leaders are not interested. The people are only not interested. So they also select these kind of leaders who are not interested. And then they make such policies where there is no mention of God. You know, the entire world is running on you know, economic growth, GDP growth, this growth, that growth, defense expenditure, you know, the what not expenditures they have. But there is, there is zero focus on elevating the consciousness of people. And that is why everybody is suffering. It is not because that, you know, there is lack of resources in this world. There is there is no lack of resources. The only reason why it appears to uh, that there is a lack of resource or there are lack of resources is because there is greed, there is selfishness in this world. Somebody's food, somebody has taken and then the other person is hungry. That is the only reason. Otherwise, there, there will be no scarcity in this world. Alright, so... Yudhishthi Maharaj is the perfect example. He did not twist and turn you know, the scriptural injunctions for his own personal sense enjoyment, for his own personal self-aggrandizement because he knew he was a king and he should not do that. If he starts doing, then everybody will start doing that and then the whole society will be ruined like it happens today. 
you know anybody who is powerful you know they can twist and turn the law you know oh i i will uh, i will uh, cheat the government like this i will cheat the people like this i will say this i will say that oh actually i never said that you know actually my words have been twisted you know my words uh, have been you know uh, changed you know i never said that my context was different you know i never meant that i didn't say that he said i said oh so that, that's the problem you see we, we we are we are only not having spiritual awareness and therefore we are not aware of what kind of qualities a leader should have and that is why we are suffering because the leaders are making such policies uh, where there is no there is no space there is no room for spiritual growth and that is why people they are not people are not happy these days they are they're just suffering and even if they have money they have so much tons of money you know they are they are married you know they have the best spouse available <laughs> but still they are miserable you know they are running behind the spouse of somebody else why is it happening because the people are becoming more and more animalistic their tolerance is going down and then people they are not able to maintain they are not able to control their senses their behavior has become like animals animalistic right so therefore arjuna's dilemma was very clear that he had to fight this war which he did not want but it was his duty so he had to do and that and the same thing yudhishthir maharaj also exemplifies when he said that i will not use this 13 days as for 13 years because i am the king and although i have to tolerate 13 years 12 years but i will still do that even though i don't like it <laughs> because that is my karma that is that is there in my destiny i cannot just uh, evade it like this you know by saying oh some scriptural statement says you know instead of 13 years it's like 13 days no i i i, I can't do that and he was extremely fortunate that he had such great brothers like you know arjun bhim and nakul and sade nakul sade were not his uh, were his step brothers but they were more of his brothers you know then even more he used to love him even more than he loved arjun and bhim who were his own brothers you know and they followed what yudhishthir maharaj said so when a leader is exemplary the people are also exemplary and when the people are when the leader is not exemplary the people are also irresponsible you know so the the summary of this verse is that we should learn to tolerate things and we should take inspiration from these great personalities like yudhishthir maharaj where in the universe you will you will find a person like yudhishthir maharaj never 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 you will find he is the pinnacle he is the epitome of all uh, all quality divine qualities noble qualities virtuous qualities one, one of them is tolerance of course and imagine after the kurukshetra war was over when he was the uh, undisputed emperor of the entire world even then he used to go every morning and wash the feet of his you know uncle this the rashtra can you believe it that person who is probably the biggest cook in the mahabharat because he was the one who had allowed all these other uh, criminals to act especially duryodhan karna dushasan and shakuni all these they they were they were acting with full confidence against the pandavas why because they knew that this old blind useless king is on our side he will not do anything to the pandavas we can do whatever we want we can disrobe draupadi we can send them out to the forest we can burn them in varnavrat we can do whatever they want so he is the biggest criminal he is the biggest he he is like the worst character to be born in the entire kuru dynasty because if he was not there none of these would have happened duryodhan could have never said uh, to Dush to dushasan that go and drag draupadi through with her hairs and bring her here he would have never been able to say that he only said that because of course he he is a crook himself but he he knew that even if i say this my father who is supposedly the king will not object to it because my father is a uh, he is a helpless uh, he is like a helpless father who is so attached to to him to his son right so 
Yudhishthir Maharaj would go and you know touch the feet of this uh, this wretched criminal Dhritarashtra every day morning. Can you believe it? And he used to uh, uh, offer obeisances to him, wash his feet. Can you just believe it? I mean, that person who has ruined your family, who has ruined your entire life, your entire existence has been ruined, total, completely. You go and touch the feet of this person <laughs> daily. And he was not doing superficially or artificially. Ugh, what to do? You know, Indian culture, Vedic culture, you should pay respect to your elders. Ugh. It's just a formality, keep doing, you know. Although I know he's a crooked person, but still. Huh, what to do, you know? Matri Devo Bhava, Pitri Devo Bhava, Atithi Devo Bhava. So many rules are there. So we must follow the rules, right? So we must wash his feet. No, he was not doing it out of mere formality. Like many people today do. You know, they will take care of their mother, father, but it's just a mere formality. There's no affection. There's no, uh, there's no love. It's just out of mere responsibility they are doing. And they are, and they are waiting, you know, when, when, when will these... these People die, and when will I get the time to enjoy? <laughs> All right, he was doing it with his full consciousness. When he used to touch the feet of the Dhritarashtra, he used to literally feel that my father Pandu is not alive, so he is like my father. He is like God for me. And can you imagine Draupadi? She also used to, you know, wash the feet of this Dhritarashtra. That lady who has tolerated so much, my God. She also used to, you know, I mean, these are, these are, <laughs> and then we imagine ourselves, you know, someday somebody says something, we, you know, we'll, we start going against that person. It's, it's so stupid. We should never do that. Whenever we want to, you know, take revenge or, you know, we want to defeat somebody, you know, or we want to uh, prove our superiority, we should always think of, uh, personalities like Arjuna and Yudhishthi Maharaj and Draupadi, these three personalities especially, and Bhima also. My God. <laughs> Alright, so when we think of these great personalities and what they had undergone in their lives, and then when we see our lives, you know, what happens? Somebody said, said something bad there, you know, the boss chastised us, father chastised, mother chastised, the husband shouted, the wife shouted. They're all petty things which keeps happening in our lives. Alright, so if we compare our lives with these great personalities, Mahajans, with the 12 Mahajans, then we will start laughing. I mean, what they faced and what we faced, that's nothing. And look the way we behave when some wrong thing happens with us, you know, when there is some injustice, you know, we, we go out on Facebook and we go all out, you know, oh, support me, do this, do that, which is fine, there's nothing wrong with it, but just, just, Check the attitude with which we do, you know. Oh, I am the center of the universe. How dare somebody say bad things about me? How dare somebody insult me? How dare somebody say bad, uh, say that my performance was not good? You know, how dare he say that about me? How dare she said that about me? <laughs> I will ruin that person's image. I will ruin that person's um, entire life. You know, so if we behave like this, then we are behaving like Duryodhana and company, all right? And we all know what happened. Duryodhana and company, all the members, all the crooks face death, the worst, worst, worst of all death, deaths that anybody can face, these, these uh, Kauravas faced, you know. So let us not be like the Kauravas and let us take inspiration from Great personalities like Yudhishthir Maharaj, like Arjuna, like Bhishma Pitama, of course. He's one of the 12 Mahajans. And so many other characters in the Srimad Bhagavatam. For example, Dhruva Maharaj is there. You know, then we have Prithu Maharaj. You know, then we have Ambarish Maharaj. So many. There are hundreds and thousands of characters. All right. So let us take inspiration from these characters. And when will we be able to take inspiration from them? If we read about them, if we are watching Netflix, we are watching TV, and we are wasting time watching the filthy, disgusting, boring news channels of this world of Kali Yuga, then our fate is doomed. <laughs> All right, so let us not waste time. And today morning, today evening, today afternoon, or tomorrow morning, tomorrow never comes, so it's today. Abhi nahi to kabhi nahi, as in Hindi they say. Now, today itself, 
let us start reading the bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavatam by that only we can elevate our consciousness there is no way no way no way nothing of this world can help us because nothing of this world can elevate our consciousness spiritually all right that is it from my side and the next verse is also beautiful we will discuss about it also the next time all right thank you very much god is there with you all the time and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me please go down to the description section of my videos for finding my website and see you next time